Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about anatomy and physiology. Specifically, we are going to cover the microanatomy. So essentially, the cell or cells within our body. We won't go too in depth, but we're going to be talking about certain components within the cell that will be a smooth transition to how other parts of the body work, specifically the heart and the brain. It's going to be so much fun. So when we look into the cell, we want to pay attention to the boundaries of the cell, the plasma membrane. And when we look closely, we will see that the cell walls, that plasma membrane, actually looks like this. So we have two layers of our plasma membrane, and it's actually made up of phospholipids, and it's called the phospholipid bilayer because there are two layers of phospholipids. Now, if we actually look at one phospholipid, we have our phosphate head, and two fatty acid tails. Now, the structure of these phospholipids and the bilayer of the phospholipids actually have a very important purpose, which is the phosphate head is hydrophilic, and the tails are hydrophobic. Now, hydrophilic means it loves water. It is best friends with water. It wants to be around water. It loves it. Hydrophobic is it hates water. It doesn't want to be anywhere near water, doesn't like it, hates it. So the hydrophilic heads are on the outside, and the hydrophobic tails are on the inside. So we, if we look at our bilayer again, we have hydrophilic, so this is the outside of the cell and the inside. The hydrophilic heads are touching the intracellular fluid, and the hydrophilic heads on the top side, the outside, are touching the extracellular fluid, so the stuff on the outside. And our tails, these guys, those guys are in between because they do not want to be touching any fluid, any water whatsoever. So they are safely protected in here by its bodyguards, which are the phosphate heads. This is what every cell in the body looks like what the cell boundaries look like. So when we look at a portion of the cell membrane at the phospholipid bilayer, we will find there are different types of proteins that have the function of transporting certain ions, certain molecules in and out of the cell. This one specifically is very important. It is the sodium potassium pump, sodium Na+, which is the green ones, and potassium, K+, plus, which is the orange ones. Now the inside of the cell, the intracellular fluid, likes to be as negatively charged as possible. But when there is a high concentration of sodium, which is positively charged, these pumps, the sodium-potassium pump, starts to pump out sodium and bring in potassium. This pump specifically moves three sodiums out and two potassiums in. So what happens is the concentration inside the cell is positively charged. This pump clicks to open on the inside of the cell where three 
sodiums move into their little gouges there. There's a conformational change where the protein clicks open to the outside and these sodiums come out. And then two potassiums come in and move into their gouges. There's a conformational change where the protein allows them in. Three sodiums, a conformational change, and they come out to the outside of the cell. And then two potassiums, a conformational change, go to the inside. And this process continues to happen until the charge of the intracellular fluid, the inside of the cell, becomes more negative. At that point, the sodium-potassium pump would stop working and would only start to kick in again when the inside of the cell becomes too positively charged, where it starts to move out sodiums, because sodiums love Love, 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 love. They have a very high affinity for negatively tar charged places. So sodiums love to flood into a cell all the time. So these sodium potassium pumps are there to spit them out when the inside of the cell becomes too positively charged. Some of the other proteins that transport ions are ion channels. Now with ion channels, each channel or each protein transports a specific ion. And these are pretty simple. You have your fingery looking guys that make your transport your protein. And then you have your ions hanging out in the extracellular fluid which is outside the cell. And these little fingers open up. The molecule or the ion comes in and it pushes it through where the other finger opens up and allows that ion to come into the cell. So those ion channels are very simple and there are different types of ion channels. We have voltage, gated ion channels, which are essentially when there is an electrical impulse that stimulates the membrane and the protein, the protein then goes into action. Some type of electrical impulse hits and activates and stimulates the protein. And when that happens, it opens up and allows the ion to come in, pushes it through, the other one opens up and allows it into the cell. And then we have ligand gated ion channels, which are essentially proteins or ion channels that are activated by a chemical messenger. So if we have, let's say this is our chemical messenger, it comes along and it activates our ion channel to open. Allow the ion in, pushes it through, and into the cell. And then our last type of ion channel is mechanically gated. Now with mechanically gated ion channels, you will find these at the very ends of the neurons in the peripheral nervous system, so the ones that go to your extremities and to the skin, so in your hands and fingers especially, so they are sensitive to pressure, so any type of touch or physical sensation on the skin 
that depresses the skin, which depresses the cell membrane, and that physical pressure opens up the ion channels to allow ions in, which then send a message down or an electrical impulse down the neuron and then up to the brain till you know, hey, we touched something. Hey, something touched us. Oh, we felt this sensation. So there is physical pressure on the skin and then on the cell, which opens up the ion channel, allows the ion to come in and into the cell. And as long as there's pressure, this ion channel will remain open, allowing ions in to then send an electrical impulse to the brain. So as you can see, I love talking about physiology, especially on the cellular level. We didn't cover every aspect of the cell, like what organelles are inside of it, what they all do, etc. So I only covered the proteins or the ion channels that allow ions and molecules in and out of the cell because those are very important in other physiological processes that happen within the body. And it is going to be so much fun to talk about how all that works in different body systems and what other effects it has on how the body works and functions. So if you want to learn more about anatomy and physiology and how it connects to coding, subscribe to this channel so you're always in the know and get all of those notifications on when I have new videos coming up. I will have a link in the description to the previous ANP introduction video, and I will continue to add any PCS or CPT procedures that we code for that connect to whatever current topic we're talking about in these ANP videos, so you have different videos to look at and see how they're connected. It's going to be awesome, and I'll see y'all later. Bye!